Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's e -Ride. We've got another Star Wars video after talking about Star Wars Outlaws. And this time it is TIE Fighter Total Conversion for X-Wing Alliance. Angel, the lead developer of this project, has done a fantastic job. I did play this game. I have a full playthrough on the channel. So if you're interested, you can check it out as well. It's absolutely amazing. It's basically you're playing TIE Fighter with modern graphics and modern mechanics absolutely brilliant here and so there's a new patch that's coming up uh, that is already out and so angel is going to give us here the details of what's new with the new patch oh man look at this <laughs> so awesome Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very long time since I last did one of these, but I finally have a new TFTC video for you, and it's to announce the release of the 1.3.3 patch, as well as other updates that have been happening since. Yes. This new patch will bring TFTC up to date with the recent XWAU 5.6.2 patch that was released back in May. So XWA is x Wing Alliance Upgrade, and the x Wing Alliance Upgrade has been doing so much for the game. Now there's ray tracing, uh, there's, there, there's support graphic cards, which was not the case before. Everything was on the CPU, but now it's on the GPU. So it, it took years, decades in the making, but they finally were able to make it. So really a lot of things happening here, which allows also for all of that progress. And we'll also introduce a bunch of bug fixes, balance updates, and even some new updates. Let's quickly go through what you can expect to see in this patch. A brand new main concourse screen. Oh, this was showcased some oh months ago, my. but didn't what a change! <laughs> what a change compared to X-Wing Alliance. And look at this. We can even see ships outside moving about their business, the planets where we are at. That's wonderful. Didn't quite make it into 1.3.2 at the time. Now, though, you can fully enjoy this updated visual feast in 1.3.3. The concourse will show new animations and backgrounds depending on your current progress in the wow, campaign. It is fully new and updated models have been added, including the new revamped Imperial One Class Star Destroyer oh, it and the so addition good. of several new ships, including the Predator Class Star Destroyer, which will be Zarin's new flagship for TFTC okay. Reimagined, and the Valiant Class Cruiser, which will serve as a flagship for the Nami faction and is based on the Veneta Star Destroyer. The inclusion of Zarin's new flagship has meant that some minor Oh wow, look at all those turbo lasers on the side. That is impressive. Changes have been made to reimagine to account for this wherever the Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer Glory previously showed up. The Glory will instead be first introduced as this new ship in Battle 6 Mission 4 Reimagined, whereas previous appearances of the Glory in Reimagined will simply now be a different Star That's Destroyer. So, so cool. You will also find that the new Valiant Cruiser is also in Battle 6 Mission 4. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it looks definitely like a Clone Wars type of, uh, of Star Replacing the Venator that was previously there. But don't worry, the Venators will still be... Oh, there it is. There's the Venator, right? Again, none of these ships were in the original X-Wing Alliance, right? Or TIE Fighter. It's all these are all new models added into the game. They've been doing such a great job bringing those models from different eras in Star Wars. Such <laughs> that is so cool. Showing up later in future reimagined missions. Ray tracing. Oh. Yes, the wizards of the XWAU team have added ray tracing to the game. This further improves the visuals, but at the expense of performance. So I mean, that's fine. If you have, uh, if you have like a, a good GPU now, it should be okay. Make sure your system is capable of handling it. By default, it is disabled, but you can enable it by going to the Babu Frick configurator from the launcher under the ray tracing checkbox. Gimbal lock fix. This issue has plagued oh. all versions of the engine from the original X-Wing to X-Wing Alliance. Oh man, this... This was the most horrible thing. When I tried X-Wing Alliance upgrade for the first time with those new giant planet backgrounds that you can see here, Coruscant, right, in the, in, in the back. It's been causing a lot of issues, and it's felt it's it's been feeling very uncomfortable playing those games. And I was always wondering why there's something that seems to be holding me back when I'm playing the game, and I don't want to. I'm not going exactly where I want to go. This has been fixed. What is this gimbal lock issue? You ask. 
Well, you may have noticed that when you're flying directly up or down to the poles of the skybox, particularly when chasing enemy targets, it yes. suddenly feels like you're like fighting this, your controls to stay straight and steady, almost as if a magnet is pushing you away. Basically, the game is programmed to use pitch, yaw, and roll as defined axes. Based on how the numbers crunch down, if any of the axes yeah, overlap on the so same plane, gimbal lock will occur, and so your craft ends up pushing away from the direction you're trying to go in. Well, I'm happy to say that this issue has finally been fixed by rewriting this function of the flight mechanics. Along with these changes, you can also expect to see new explosion visuals okay. and hopefully some noticeable Well, they're kind of based on the original explosions though. improvements to both VR and non-VR performance levels. Look at the density of this asteroid field, unlike anything I've seen in a Star Wars TIE Fighter game. A full list of all changes made can be viewed on our website via the changelog section, which is also included in the patch download itself. A brand new, completely rewritten installation tutorial has also been posted along with this announcement. That's awesome. That's awesome. because installing those mods sometimes can be a bit overwhelming. You don't, and I've played Tie Fighter Total Conversion. You don't need to worry about anything. Just click on a few buttons for the uh, auto installer that they have, and it will install your game automatically. It's wonderful. This tutorial should better address and explain things than the previous versions, including a more expanded approach to VR and other more common issues people tend to oh, face. Yeah, I forgot to you can play this in VR. I completely for Man, I need to buy a VR headset just to try this out. <laughs> Install the patch, make sure you restore your current version of TFTC back to XWAU by using the Palpatine Total Converter to restore the light side, and then run the installer and follow its instructions. If you are new to the mod and installing from a fresh copy, then make sure you first install version 1.3. You don't need to install any of the older TFTC patches first, as 1.3.3 contains all the updates since the initial release of version 1.3. If in any okay. doubt, please take a look at the aforementioned new tutorial video that has been posted to my channel for further details. Oh, and I remember when I installed, the very first time I installed TFTC through the uh, the video tutorial, oh, it was so helpful, but now that they have an automatic installer, it's even better. So what else has been going on these past few months, you may ask? Yes. Well, work is slowly continuing on finishing the reimagined campaigns. And that's, that's why I haven't played yet. That's why I haven't bought a new joystick, because my joystick is broken. Haven't bought a joystick. I'm waiting for Angel to finalize the last battles of TIE Fighter Reimagined version. I want to play until the end of the last battle. But uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to stop the story of Battle Ten and then restart again. Right? I, I, I just want to play the full experience. And that's why I haven't tried it. But when I do, when it is there, I will be doing another full playthrough on the channel, I promise you guys. Battles 9 and 10 are now fully playable in their entirety and have been under beta testing and Battle 11 is well on course to becoming fully playable by the end of August. Also, we should be able to see uh, Battle 9 and 10 very soon then. This then just leaves Battles 12 and 13 to finish, which I'm hoping will be done by late autumn or at the end of 2023. It's slow going, but as my scope is much bigger than previous battles, the increased narrative complexity, and the fact that I'm the only one designing and making these missions, it will take time, but I really hope it will be worth the wait. Again, and I'm, I'm, I'm promising Aside you guys, Angel is doing such an amazing job redoing these missions. He's doing voices too, he's rewriting them, changing the story a little bit to update it with modern Star Wars lore, and it, it's fantastic. Uh, it's such a great gaming experience set in the Star Wars universe, and anyone who loves Star Wars should try TIE Fighter Total Conversion. You need X-Wing Alliance, but it's very From cheap. mission creation, we've also been working on designing new high-definition concourse screens for every room. On your screen, you can see examples of current work-in-progress scenes, including the new pilot's room and an updated briefing room, giving you even more immersion, as we can also tie in more cutscenes and animations to them. Nice. We are also considering... Our By the way, uh, let's have a look here again. This is the uh, tutorial area here. To them. We are also oh, considering our options for remaking all the cutscenes using in-game footage. For that is so cool. In-game footage. The cutscene, they are no longer going to be those old-fashioned early 1990s cutscenes. They are going to make, well, they're considering, but please do it, Angel, because it looks so cool and it's 
it it just will feel more immersive to see everything in game happening in game right? exterior shots and in 3d interiors created specifically for the cutscene with some character interactions if we think we can pull this off well enough i will probably be adding a lot of new cutscenes as well as remaking the existing ones for reimagined as i believe it's a much better way to give additional oh, yes. context and flavor to the narrative versus just relying on the giant walls of text we're forced to use in the briefings and i really wonder how he's doing all this camera work with all the you know just turning around like this and those ships flying how does he do that this is so if cool. and when we get a concept ready i will post it publicly for further feedback from the community and that pretty much covers it for this update i will be back in the future of course with new updates as i have them and i promise i'll try to get back to doing some development live streams which i've not done for a few months now you can also check out my let's play series i've been doing with various star oh, yeah. trek games lately if you're interested in that sort of thing so until next time pilots fly safe that is so cool all right well we'll definitely be checking it out and waiting for new content for tie fighter uh, tie fighter total conversion all right guys i need to fix my <laughs> my green screen Hopefully, we'll see. All right, what do we have next?